What's up, everyone? Welcome to the, I guess this is the first of the mini live sales that I'm trying to work out here. So I had this idea of doing um, one of these live shows, but kind of keeping it compact to one type of coral because um, usually when we do our monthly live show, one of, the, one of the bigger problems is that the show goes for about three hours and typically not everybody is interested in every single coral. So maybe there's like a particular person that's just interested in LPS or just interested in SPS or they're into zoanthids or mushrooms or something like that, soft corals. And kind of um, sitting through the entire three hour thing might be just a little bit of a stretch. So maybe they watch on a rebroadcast or whatever, but it's, it does, it's not exactly ideal. So what I wanted to try to do was to not break up the live show. Like I'm thinking of just still having the full live show going on uh, one time per month. But the other three weekends do more targeted live shows kind of like this. So real quick, I can see people are filing into chat. So how's everybody doing? Reef Ghost, reefing with Reefer, to please. Quay Tran, what's up? Hello everybody, Gabriel Montero, Blue Basin. What is up everybody, Paul? Hope you all are having a good time. So I'm down for that kind of live show. Terrific, terrific. Uh, what's the best way to reach out to you regarding wholesale purchases? Um, we don't have like a, a true wholesale policy just yet, um, but you can probably just like go ahead and email us. Um, chances are the best option if you're looking for wholesale pricing is to purchase one of our packs. They're very competitively priced. Uh, but if you're looking for like a really big order, then then email me. So anyway, this particular live show is also kind of unique in the sense that we're doing it both on Facebook and Insta uh, oh, Instagram. We're not doing it on Instagram. We're doing it on Facebook as well as on YouTube. So I am not sure if the Facebook thing is, oh, there we go, Facebook is working. All right, so I wanted to see real quick how to do this. So if I go to videos real quick, okay, there we are. Show the comments. Video is paused on FB. So, okay, so I'm seeing uh, William Henry on Facebook saying that the video is paused on Facebook, um, but I don't know if, if that's just him or not because I'm watching it on Facebook and it's, it's playing. So that might just be you, I'm afraid. So the other uh, question that I had was, since there's like two different communities looking at this, do you want to see it on screen? Uh, let me know because I think I can I can work it out so like the Facebook people can see the YouTube comments on screen and the um, YouTube guys can see the Facebook comments on screen. So, okay, Jim Gintner. Thank you, Jim. FB is good. All right. Well, we can probably uh, put that up from time to time as well. I can, I can play with it just a little bit. It takes a tiny bit of finagling just because it's a little bit weird to fit it, to kind of squeeze it all in. Um, here, I'll just kind of mess with it a little bit here. I have to admit, it is a little strange. Because um, I have to like kind of mess with the cropping and all that stuff. But long story short, it'll look kind of like, if I, if I wanted to put them both up, it will look like that, kinda, kinda. I might be able to do a little bit better. But anyway, you guys get the you guys get the idea, right? So I will go ahead and clear those two out for. Whoops, not myself. I'm gonna clear those two out. 
And real fast, let's go over the rules. So for the folks that are very familiar with um, how this works on, um, on YouTube, the way to purchase corals is to go to titlegardens.com slash live and that's where you see all the numbered items. There should be 50 in total. Um, shipping is a flat rate, it's $39.99, and it's free for orders over $250. So you don't have to only buy stuff just from the live show. You can go to other parts of the site if you see like a scully that you like or something. That'll definitely get you over the free shipping threshold. Um, you can just mix and match. They're just, they're, they, they behave as regular items. Just make sure that you pay shipping once or if you purchase and then eventually um, make it over that 250 threshold but you paid shipping, don't worry about that. We, we refund shipping. Uh, let's see, what else should, what should I say? The, um, in order to actually get a coral, it's not sufficient just to have it in your cart. You have to fully check out with it. So it's okay to, to check out a number of times. Just make sure to, to select live sale shipping as the shipping option so you're not charged multiple instances of shipping. No, no sound? Hmm. <laughs> Is this better? Can you guys hear me now? Okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> that, that's hilarious. So, so Jackal's like, it's gone. Don't worry. He'll get it in a few. That's funny. Yeah, it, it, it happens. Like, so when I change uh, some of these settings here every now and again, um, for some reason, sometimes audio doesn't make it through. So anyways, okay, you didn't get any of that. All right, long story short, uh, complete the checkout if you actually want the item. Just having something in your shopping cart doesn't get it. Okay. Um, it's a flat rate $39.99, free over $250. You can mix and match stuff from uh, the, the live show list as well as other items on the site. They, they behave the same. Uh, USA only, and this live show, the, the items will stay up and available for probably till like Tuesday or so. Okay. So hopefully you guys got all that. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's very similar to how the rest of live shows have gone. So the, the difference with this is um, this particular live show is that the, the items were shot a little bit earlier. So I don't have any other camera person. This is just me doing this. Um, and the, the perspective of the corals you'll see looks a little bit nicer. The whole thing is just a little bit more succinct. So the live show starts officially. Coral number one is gonna start at five o'clock. So if you have uh, some SPS questions, I'd be happy to field it. And anybody in, in, in chat, feel free to jump in if you see a question that you can tackle as well. And I am gonna make Billy Pipes a moderator. He is a regular. Add moderator, Billy Pipes, there you go. Congrats, <laughs> you have a job now. All right, so I will, I will jump back and forth in chat between um, the folks on Facebook and the folks on, on YouTube. And if you, again, if, you, if you'd like, I can put both of them on there. But uh, it does suck up some real estate too, so just so you know. Uh, what are you drinking, Than? This is just water. This is just water. Okay, five o'clock, let's get into it. So, the first coral we have here is our pomegranate acropora. What if uh, Rico starts a live feed during this? You gotta pick and choose. <laughs> or actually, you, you, you guys are probably tech savvy enough to have us both on there. Okay. 
<laughs> yeah, Brian, Brian Tadkin Horse is like, it's five, let's go. So Acropora, for those of you that haven't tried them before, can be like rather temperamental. They, they kind of, I would say that they, op, they occupy like the most challenging rung of the ladder. Um, as far as like what, you know, SPS, let's moving on to number two, they, they kind of occupy that with Montipora here. This is coral number two, Montipora. Um, just because they're, they're, they need to have such consistent parameters all the time. And that's one of the reasons why we haven't gone completely headfirst into the, the super expensive, um, the, the, it's the most trendy uh, SPS, is simply because uh, the, the way that we keep corals out of the greenhouse, we try very, very hard for consistency, but it's one of the harder things to achieve because so many different variables are changing. But in your aquariums, you should have a lot more success. So as long as your, your, your parameters stay more or less unchanged, you should do pretty well with these. Um, sometimes, like, I, I notice that people just freak out and go crazy about specific numbers. And mm, I can tell you that we've grown a lot of SPS quite successfully in parameters that nobody's looking for. So I think that the lowest our alkalinity has ever been, and this is not in some small aquarium where you know stuff was fluctuating, this was in a 1,000 gallon aquarium that where we were having like all these, all these chemistry issues. Our alkalinity was down to, I think, two point something DKH. And so for those of you that are kind of like unfamiliar with where your DKH should be, it should be about eight to 10. And ours is down near two for a long, long time. Oops, you know what? It's, it's hard to see the prices because of this chair. Let me move that out of the way. And I can move over here just a little bit. <laughs> Spare chair blocking the, the screen hiding the price. So Dr. Walsh of Magic, you can always go to titlegardens.com slash live move the kitty chair <laughs> yeah so you can always go to um to titlegardens.com and you can see the pricing there as well all right and yes uh harkins aquatics this is uh what you see is what you get okay did i miss any other things uh your la your feet is lagging on my phone keeps buffering, not normal. Um, is anybody else having in, any issues with buffering? Because there is, you know, there is some technical difference that, you know, we're, we're doing here uh, in that we're broadcasting to two different locations. So hopefully you are able to see it. Okay, perfect. I just had to move the kitty chair. So, so oftentimes like, a, um, I don't know. It's, it is the kitty chair. Like nobody sits in that except the cats. Nope, normal for me, good. Thanks, Gabriel. Yeah, it's always good to get uh, to get feedback. Ruth Bowers on Facebook, thanks, no issues here. Great. Have trouble hearing you. Hmm. Not sure. Um... Is Piper making a cameo? She's like sitting about 10 feet away and she'll make her cameo once she gets hungry enough. Once she gets hungry, it's, she's gonna be incessantly barking at us. Wait, isn't this live show a little earlier than usual? Mm, no, it's, it's later. Uh, usually <clears throat> when we do our big live show, we are, we start at 2 p.m. And we end at five. So this is actually starting at five, ending whenever it ends. I mean, this is a much smaller live show. We're only going to about 50 corals, and we're only on coral number six. And it isn't HD for me, Brady Hubbard. 
I think that for, for the YouTube crowd, it should be available at 1080p 60. Like, that's a pretty high data rate. Yeah, so it, ooh, so Reefer Sherman's getting some buffering too. I wonder if it's, it, could, it, could it be your internet connection? Because I'm like looking at my broadcast software and it tells me when like we're dropping frames and if we have like a, like a, a bad stream connection and we're dropping an acceptably low number of frames. So, yeah. And, okay, so uh, Gorgula says, nice footage. I like the pre-shot. So I appreciate that because um, I was, we were, so Ben and I were kind of discussing like the pros and cons of shooting it like a day or two in advance um, versus like, versus having it live, 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 right? And he was saying, well, it's not really live if we shoot the corals in advance. And I'm like, but I'm live. <laughs> and we can communicate live with the people that are watching. That's kind of the point of live. It doesn't matter that the coral was not like right now live because, um, you know, like one of the, the one of the problems of doing it like like live live is that a fish can just come by, you know, three corals into the future right here, throw it, and it's like that thing's not going to be open by the time this camera gets there, or it could be worse. It could pick up the coral right now and throw it. That's like oh well, well that just happened. Uh, you know, we have we have big fish in these aquariums, and they love to like mess with corals, so. You know, at least that way we're guaranteed to have like a good shot of every single coral. <laughs> I'm only on my phone getting pizza, no buffering issues here. Cool, cool. Big boy sippy cup. This is my fake Yeti. So I, I've told this story before, but um, these things are usually about like seventy dollars, um, and on on Amazon they were like twenty. And it's like sold by Yeti. I'm like, cool. And after I purchased it, I started reading all these things about how to tell if it's a fake Yeti or not. And sure enough, all the little design cues, like, you know, like the, oh, like the, the, the lettering here shouldn't be this and, and that. And sure enough, this was a fake Yeti. And I complained to Amazon. They said, it is a free Yeti now. So there you go. Uh, some Chromecasts can't handle 60p. No buffering here, but one gig fiber. Yeah, there you go. I'm kind of jealous of that. It seems like everybody's got, got the sweet fiber except me. Both iPhone and PS4 stream not working now. They were AT&T as our carrier. Hmm, that is weird. That might just be AT&T. We used to use AT&T for like our phones and we moved. We switched over to, to T-Mobile. Uh, okay, so Jess Ramirez is asking, I'm starting to buy coral for my tank. Is it an issue if I add several coral at the same time? You know what, it's really not. Um, a lot of times that, that issue is more isolated to fish. And so kind of like people have that same worry because it's like, oh, I don't want to increase my bio load too much. Um, it's really not a thing in, in coral land. I mean, you could get like 10 corals, throw them all into your tank. It's not gonna make a huge meaningful difference as far as like your nutrients are, are concerned or anything like that. Like the bio load of corals is relatively low. Um, I think that if you added like giant colonies suddenly in your, in your tank, I guess if they immediately started growing and, and soaking up all your, all your nutrient, um, like calcium alkalinity, all that stuff, you might have a problem, but usually corals don't hit the ground running, so to speak, when they just get into your tank. Um, yeah, I wouldn't worry about it too much. So Billy Pipes is saying, the picture quality of the stream on my TV is freaking awesome. Thanks, man. There's, there is a little bit of room still for, for improvement. Um, for, from our broadcasting end. Uh, I would like to do that one day, but it's gonna involve a little bit more uh, 
bandwidth than we have, and it's going to involve like a better capture card than we currently have, and a different broadcasting software. But theoretically, if, if I wrinkle out those three things, I should be able to uh, broadcast in 4K. Okay, so Gary Montgomery is asking, what is the shipping? Shipping is a flat rate $39.99, and it is free over $250. So real quick, okay, I'll have to remember that we are on coral number 11, but this is the rules, okay? So if you wanted to participate in the actual purchasing of corals, you can check out titlegardens.com slash live, and you'll see all these numbers down below, just numbered items. So if you see like, for example, number 11, that was that Pasolipora, throw that into your shopping cart and check out. Um, in order to actually get the coral, you have to fully finish the checkout process. Just having it in your cart doesn't really do anything. And I guess like lastly, um, this is a USA only thing. We don't do international shipping. And the corals will be available until about Tuesday or Wednesday. That's the long and short of it. There's a longer explanation on Tidal Gardens, uh, the Tidal Gardens website. So please check that out. Bummer that you started this while I'm doing a water change. You are in luck. I think that both platforms, they publish these videos um, pretty much right after that they're done. So you can, uh, you can take a look at them afterwards. But if you have questions now, by all means, throw it in there. Uh, acidic burritos, Title Garden's your only business slash job. Uh, yeah, th I, more or less. I mean, we, I, I do like other stuff but it's not, um, it's tapered off. Like there was a time when I did a lot of business law type stuff, a lot of consulting, uh, biotech consulting as well, and like venture capital type activity. And I kind of, when I left that world, I was still doing a significant amount of consulting. And Tidal Gardens was kind of the thing in the background. But over the years, Tidal Gardens, the, the Tidal Gardens uh, pie has gotten bigger and like the consulting, um, like investment, legal, business stuff has kind of tapered off. Uh, Javier Wilhelm, why no shipping to Europe? Yeah, I'm sorry. It's, it's really hard to do shipping, uh, to, to Europe especially. Uh, there's, a lot of, um, there's a lot of obstacles as far as like fish and wildlife goes. And I received an email from, um, from a lady that, I think is a lady now that, I haven't responded yet, but uh, she works with the authorities in Canada, I believe, and so she was talking about like all the all the different issues with just shipping to Canada. Um, I don't know anybody that does export to another country, like like my my friends in the industry. So there's a lot of like logistical hurdles to to shipping to Europe. So so unfortunately. Um, that's not a skill set or knowledge that we currently possess. It'd be something worth exploring in the future, but from what I understand, it's um, there's a ton of problems with it right now. Okay, moving on, let's go to number 14. I'm trying to catch up on some comments here, guys. Uh oh, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but somebody's screaming at me for food, and that's probably not gonna stop anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, I um, I'll tell you what, we're, we're still going on with this uh, with this build over at the new building, and it is it's been a uh, an exercise in patience, let's just say. To, to get that all up and running. But I am very, 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 very excited to one day get some tanks and get them filled with water. You have no idea now. Like before, uh, I wasn't like super excited because it seemed so far away, but now it's getting close. Close as in like six months. And that's like, I can, I can start to feel that excitement. Gabriel Montero, thank you. Thank you so much for the $2. Can't buy anything, so here. Oh, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. Every little bit helps, trust me. I just got a, um, my quote for 
HVAC. So get this, like you know, you you try to plan things out in stages, like you know, and hope and with contingencies, like if this, then this, right? So we were thinking, well, I was thinking about handling a lot of our um, our issues with humidity and stuff like that with air exchange. And I think it'll work just great in the winter time. Uh, sorry, $30. <laughs> um, it'll work just great in the winter time. But I think as like I transition to back to summer, it's not going to be able to handle it. So we are going to be getting some air conditioning units and dehumidifiers. And those are not cheap for a building that size, it turns out. Ernie Wallace, $2. Thank you very much, man. So, uh, yeah, it's like uh, the, uh, the, the Facebook guys probably don't know what the heck I'm talking about, but there's something called Super Chat that exists in, on the YouTube end of the spectrum that's kind of like a tip jar that people can, can just donate with. Yeah, there's nothing like that on Facebook. Uh, Michael Mejia on Facebook, where are the corals shipped from? They are in a, we, well, they, the corals, are shipped by us from Ohio. Yeah, we'll be sending most of these, I believe, on Monday for Delivery Tuesday. Like, Monday is, uh, it's a holiday, but it's not a FedEx holiday. It's like Columbus Day. Okay, moving on. Uh, Paw and Polished Lindsay. Husband and I made our first purchase with you during the last live show. Excited to buy again since the whole process went smoothly from beginning to end. Corals are happy. Thank you so much. No, thank you very much. Again, I got bills. <laughs> All of this helps so much. Enjoy the build videos and commiserating over contractors. You know what's crazy? One of my contractors, okay, so get this. Oh, this dude. It's, it's the septic guy again, guys. It's the septic guy again. All he has to do is pick up the phone, call the inspector, schedule an, an inspection, and we're done. And he gets paid. But it's been like two weeks. He's, he's been promising for two weeks now that like, he's going to you know, in, schedule an inspection and get this thing final. And by the way, a final inspection. Let's go on to number 18. This is an ultra leptoceris. So let's just talk about coral a little bit too. Um, a final inspection literally is just to make sure that the uh, the pumps and the aeration units for the septic tank are working. The end. That is it. This thing's been inspected four times, passes every single one. The last thing is just to make sure the quote unquote lights are on on the unit. That's all they have to do. You can schedule it yourself if it's done. John Moore on Facebook. Thank you so much. I was actually so flustered that I did break off a phone call, uh, but the guy, the the actual inspector, you know, he might have been in the field or something like that. So I, I'll, I'll, I'm, I think I'm just gonna go directly to the inspector because it's just silly. I mean, come on, like two week really? Uh, is that lepto really that soft? It looks like it's wiggling. Um, it's no, it's it's a pretty flat stony coral, but you could yeah, but you know under like the the macro lens you can see all those little little interactions. And it's not sped up or slowed down or anything like that. This is that is a real time video that you're watching. Um, somebody else had good low maintenance and tolerant SPS. Actually, the Leptoceras that you're seeing here is pretty good for that. Um, my Duncans took off like crazy. Would a Monty be okay? Yeah, it's fine. Lots of super chats, guys. That's how the hand eats. <laughs> you know what? I've been I've been eating on the same leftover pizza for like all day. It's I have a I have great diet dietary. They're they're really nice to people in this predicament. Yeah, that that's cool. That's cool, John. Okay, let's see. There was another question that I saw. Um, Oh, yes. So, uh, Beersif uh, it's on YouTube is asking, are the shots under actinic? Not really. So we use a combination of two fluorescent bulbs primarily. Let's move on to 19. We've seen enough of 18. We shoot under two types of bulbs, fluorescent. They are blue plus and coral plus. I, I, you know what? I'm going to do a video, again, talking 
more in depth about each of the, the types of bulbs that ATI makes. So you can kind of see like a comparison and, and to kind of explain why I went with that bulb combination. Um, pretty much their entire lineup of bulbs will grow coral very nicely. It's just a matter of like, um, just kind of like choosing what kind of aesthetic you're looking for. So the only little hint of actinic that you're seeing is that we have a tiny, like tiny LED flashlight that I've mounted onto the camera just to give it some, some front facing light. Otherwise it might get a little bit of, sorry, this is like camera photography technicality stuff, but I'm basically, it's, it's acting as like a, a blue fill light. Hey, do you provide wallpapers of your awesome pictures? Uh, not yet, but I might. Ernie Wallace, awesome uh, ultra lepto purchase from last live show. Blown away when I opened the box. They're pretty cool, aren't they? Like, um, whenever we sell them, uh, sometimes to other uh, other stores and stuff like that, uh, they just completely light up the the tank that they that they get put into. They have intense coloration. Um, are 10% water changes okay for SPS? That should be fine. It depends obviously on your total volume, more so than just the, just the percentage. But if you, were, if you were to do smaller, more frequent water changes, that could work too. And my cats are fighting next door. Ugly man's reefing, hope there's more colored sticks coming up. Uh, very likely. Very likely. This is the SPS show after all. Uh, do SPS require the same dosing as LPS? So this is Alessio C asking. Um, yes, in the sense that you're trying to maintain uh, the same water chemistry, right? So whatever you're, you decide to level off your reef at, let's say calcium at about 420, alkalinity about, let's say, 8 dKH, whatever, magnesium 1350, that, that's kind of like the natural salt water levels that you're looking at. Um, again, consistency is the key. So the problem that you run into with SPS versus LPS is that SPS grow a heck of a lot faster in many cases. And so what was once 10 frags are now 10 colonies that are 10 times the size. It's very easy for like little Seriatopora or even this like Montipora undata to grow from this piece that's probably a half inch to a piece that's six inches. So that's like, that's way more than 10 times the size, right? And it's going to um, absorb a proportional amount. And so you don't really have that as often or with very many LPS. It's a much more slow growing coral. So that's probably the, the thing to look out for. You are looking to, to kind of maintain the same parameters, but it's a different challenge in, to do so, if that makes sense. Um, Kevin, acans won't grow, why? Uh, and I think Billy Pipes hit it right on the head. I think that that is one of those corals that you, you should probably treat as if it were non-photosynthetic. Um, they do really well when they're fed and they don't do all that well when they're not, at least for us. Sabella fellow, what is up? I reef, hello. Seeing some, some regulars piling in now. Dayton Dingman, fan hates me. Did I, did, did I miss your, your, your question from earlier? Here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna scroll back. Dayton, oh, building update. Oh, we were talking about like some of my, my building episodes lately, but no, nothing to update just because there's not enough progress to update, you know what I'm saying? Like, I hope in like a couple weeks we can do something uh, as far as like, like a, in a halfway decent update. Like l all last week, the finished carpenter hadn't done anything. Um, nothing got painted. Obviously nothing happened with the septic. There wasn't any electrical that got done. There was some plumbing that got done, but that's not enough for a whole video. Actually, so as much as I might like uh, beat up on, on my contractors just a little bit, because they deserve it. Um, my plumber is an artist. He's fantastic. And he's putting together this uh, heating and heating system for the floor and for the, all the different zones for the tanks and stuff like that. It's 
gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I don't know how much he's going to charge me at the end for all this. It ain't going to be cheap because it is awesome. It is just awesome. <laughs> Manye McNapie, uh, SPS only when I'm broke. Thanks, man. <laughs> well, there will be more SPS during like the the the, uh, the end of month live show, which I don't even know if it's scheduled yet. But uh, for those that, that missed the beginning of the show, the idea is that we're going to have some kind of more targeted focused live shows um, like every every week and then have the one big show at the end of the month. So we'll do like an SPS show. We'll do an LPS show and probably like a, like a soft coral slash polyp show. By the way, somebody should definitely pick up this purple bonsai. I mean, it's hard for us in the greenhouse to sometimes do Acropora. We probably went our first 10 years or so not being able to do Acropora well at all. And this is probably the first year where the Acropora have looked consistently good and colorful the entire 12 months. So yeah, like stuff like the purple bonsai is doing really, really well. Uh, easiest to keep, Hammer Torch Frog Spawn. Of those three, I would probably say either Frog Spawn or Hammer. Uh, Sabella Fella, hey Than. Uh, have you heard Indo Corals are going to be priced as Aussie Corals are now since the ban lift? I haven't heard anything about pricing. Um, I don't know. I think they're just now like releasing permits and stuff. And again, like we don't do import, so it's not exactly my cup of tea. Um, but it'll be interesting to see if there's any like meaningful changes in in the in like the regulations that have gone on there in documentation requirements. Like I'm I'm not really sure what the deal is with all that. So um, yeah, if they if they price it like Aussie corals, I mean clearly Indo Indo corals were a lot less expensive than Aussie. So if Indo corals are now Aussie priced, I don't know. But then again, like the Aussie cor I'm sorry, the Indo corals that I was interested in, they were already Aussie priced. Like the, the, the sort of stuff that I would really look for Indonesia for, uh, we're talking stuff like um, Acanthophilia. Indonesian acanthophilia blow Australian acanthophilia right out of the water. They're so nice. And, you know, they're hundreds of dollars wholesale. But that's, a, that's the type of stuff that I was looking for anyway. And as far as I'm concerned, that basically is Aussie pricing. Uh, so uh, Tony S. So two to three shows a month. We'll probably do very likely, yeah, uh, two to three small shows a month and one big show. Uh, Dayton Dingman, are you doing grow out tanks this time? Um, am I doing grow out tanks? Yes. So currently we have on order eight grow out tanks. Uh, the grow out tanks are, um, they are individually over 10 feet long a piece. They're pretty slick. Well, I hope they're slick. They're not built yet, <laughs> but you know, I'm getting them from a, a manufacturer that has a very good reputation. Uh, Keon Collier, what what brand of tanks are you going with? Okay, well that's that's a much more direct question. Um, I'm going with Reef Savvy, at least for this initial purchase. Um, so the the first the first batch of tanks is more. It's like ha half the uh, the new building. And so that's t that's eight grow out tanks, and it is two giant show tanks. And by giant show tanks, I mean they're roughly seven hundred gallons a piece, just for the show. Because like, like a lot of times people talk about like you know total total volume, like including sumps and everything. No, just the display tanks. They're seven hundred gallons a piece. They're going to be ten and a half feet by four feet wide by two feet tall. Uh, uh, Mania McNamee, do we purchase like normal live shows for this one? Yes, yes. 
Okay, so we're on, you were on 27 right now. Okay, so real quick, just like just like the regular the, the regular live shows, go to titlegardens.com slash live. You can see all of the, um, you know, all the rules and whatnot there in, 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 in spelled out in greater detail. Oh, you're, you're taking off? Okay. You know what? Can you uh, throw some food into the into the kitty bowls? Because Piper's just gonna sit here and yowl at me. Okay. All right, thanks. <laughs> Mom and Dad are leaving. Okay. Uh, what were we on? Okay, so we were on number twenty-seven, right? The electric lemonade and Acropora. Uh, Tony S. In that case, can I get a job that pays in corals? Otherwise, I'm heading for BK. Um, it's funny you mentioned that because there's actually plenty of opportunities to work for Coral. So John Moore, we were trying to uh, we were trying to get something done as far as like landscaping for Coral Credit. Somebody has taken me up on a, a thing for painting for Coral Credit, and I'm like, I'm extremely flexible when it comes to that sort of thing. So if you guys out there have like a, a skill or a trade that can that could really help me out. And you think you can spend ten grand in coral? I will give you ten grand in coral credit. <laughs> it's trust me that that can be worked out. I forget exactly how much my paint bill came to, but you see, you saw the size of the building. That's a lot of paint. Uh, are you still using Omega Salt? Yes, I'm still using Omega. Uh, Keon Collier, bigger than Rico's. Yes. His tank is taller than mine, but mine is longer. His is eight feet long, mine's ten and a half long. Hi Than, would you consider a, a, a live webcam in the new building? I would. Um, in fact, I think that so what's gonna be kind of weird about my new building is that usually when people get into a building of that size, the first thing they do is like plan out how many um, how many things, how many tanks can I stuff into this space? Okay. That's fine. The other one that's still here, I haven't okay, it's all right. <laughs> Thanks. Cat feeding is like serious business here. So, well, what was I saying? Yeah, so most, most of the times people just figure out a way to stuff the most number of aquariums into that space. We took it like the exact opposite. I wanted like maximization of workspace and, and walking space. And wherever the tanks fit after that, that's all they get. So a lot of stuff as far as like, and this, this does relate back to your live stream question. I actually wanted to build workstations that could be very easy to live stream from. So if I was actually working, and doing something, let's say, let's say in this fictional new land, I'm actually propagating coral or doing something coral related. We could sit down and I could set up an actual live stream where it's not just like, you know, a, a camera just pointed off at some corner that's nothing's going on. Like we could actually be doing activities and having this type of interaction because the workstations themselves are also studio ready, if that makes sense. So maybe we have something near a saw or we can we can quickly set up something near a saw. We could set up maybe you know like just just different different things for different activities, I guess. Okay, moving on. Now we're into the more stick-like stuff. Somebody was saying, yeah, when when are the the sticks going to come? Because we at the time we were looking at a lot of the encrusting and plating stuff. Ray's Reefing is asking, are you going to miss out on a total automation system for your new building? I just want to be part and contribute to your new build. Oh, I appreciate it. Um, am I going to miss out on a total automation system? I think there's going to be a large portion of stuff that is going to be automated. A lot more automation than what's currently going on in the greenhouse for sure. The details are yet to be worked out there though.
love the idea of being studio ready. Yeah, it's it's cool. I mean, it, it a, a lot of this the stuff that uh, that we have at the greenhouse, it's I mean, I think most people probably wouldn't have that bad of an issue shooting, but it's it's just aligned all wrong to get good shots. So like everything's like cramped. You know, you can't even extend a tripod and and for for my camera. My cameras, I need a tripod. Here, one sec. So this is my camera. This is just the camera, okay? No lens. The lens comes out to like here, okay? When, it, when it's fully rigged, it's probably a good like six pounds, just, just like this. And um, if I'm just gonna be shooting stuff still, it has to be on a tripod. If I want to shoot like the the corals that you're seeing in the background, it has to be on a motorized slider. I'm not sitting there holding the camera, doing this all smooth. No, that's all motorized. And if I'm walking through like my, um, if I'm walking through my new building, I need to have uh, a full-on you know motorized stabilizer. So I'll bring that over. That's like this guy here. So the, the camera mounts into there, you flip on the motors, and this thing like stabilizes it. It's kind of like a phone stabilizer, except it can handle like 10 pounds. So yeah, it's, you kind of have to have the setup in place to actually do shooting properly. Ugh. All right, that was fun for show and tell, let's move on. Number 33. Uh, Lin Lindsay P, I walked away for a moment after leaving a comment uh, about the first purchase. Just wanted to make sure you saw it. Yes, yes. And if you if you were to rewatch this, um, I did give you a shout out. So, yep, Billy Pipes gotcha. <laughs> Hey Stan, you think 9.5 DKH is okay? I think it's fine. St uh, Stan probably does too. <laughs> Stan, I must say that you have the best photos with the best details. Thanks a bunch. Actually, I can't take credit for the for the photos anymore. It's been a while since I've done the photography for Tidal Gardens, so I basically taught Ben everything I know about photography, like from from the ground up, and the the kind of the an untold secret as far as like photography goes is that once you take about 10,000 shots and really look to see what you did wrong in each one, um, after that point you are basically a professional photographer. And you know, I, I crossed that threshold a long time ago and Ben now has crossed that threshold. So pretty much he is like one of the best photographers that I've ever seen. And yeah, he's, his photography is just excellent. I taught him everything I knew. And yeah, the rest of it is just repetition and everything. Laura Carlin, video's looking so good. Thank you very much, Laura. Glad you like it. Uh, Than, are you doing a Halloween special again? Um, yes, and I need I need some uh, some ideas for for a costume. I'm like totally drawing a blank. So Zeke the dog is trying to get my attention. I don't know what his question was though. Any cool corals for medium to low light nano? Um, medium to low light. I would look at stuff like Cyphastria, possibly Blastamusa as well. Those are very, very cool low light corals. Kitty, stop biting. It's, it's every day with those two. They fight all the time. And, and yeah, two please, that, that's like movie quality. Uh, yeah, it's literally movie quality. 
Um, do I need it for, for what I do? Not really. But it's, it's a lot of fun to play with. I mean, actually, th there's a lot of... Working with equipment like that spoils you. Because you, I in the strictest sense, you don't need it. But once you get used to it, now you can't live without it. That's kind of where I am. So oftentimes, um, you know what I'm going to do? Coming up, I'm going to do a video all about shooting with your phone. Um, like shooting your tank with your phone. Uh, and especially as it, as it involves like macro lenses and stuff like that. Because you can like purchase um, like macro clip on lenses and stuff like that for your phone. That, that could give you like a different look. And so here's what I'm probably going to do, okay? I'm going to shoot, I'm just going to go like onto Amazon, buy one of those macro lenses, do a whole review on that, just shooting stuff with this phone, and then at the end of it, I'm just going to give that lens kit away to like the Patreon folks or something like that. And to, just so like it's not always so, um, you know, so much about like the, the big expensive gear, because I mean, all the stuff that, that we work with here is so professional that it's, it's not something that, you know, people can really learn from unless you're nuts like me and want to, to spend like that. But, you know, like, there are other things that you can, can work with. I mean, if you, if, you have a, if you have a cell phone, there's a whole bunch you can still do. So Laura says, uh-oh, the Danish riffraff is watching. Haha, <laughs> evening, Dave. Um, what's up, Dave? I don't, I don't see him in the comments, so I don't know if, he's, if you're seeing a different view where you can just see if he's just watching or not. I don't know. Let's see. Adam's apple, just SPS? Yes, we're only doing SPS today. Ben does an amazing job, but it's always in the background. Than, give him front stage once. He is Mr. Never wants to show up on camera. Period. Like, he is totally camera shy. If you wanted to see... So, if you guys remember um, when Matt from Jayo Nation came, he shot like five videos or something. In one video, he totally ambushed Ben and got him on camera. It's like, because uh, cause Matt was staying the staying over for like a couple of days here. And so like, yeah, the first thing in the morning, he just, he went straight out to the greenhouse and just started filming. And, and Ben was there and just totally caught him by surprise and in interviewed him and everything. <laughs> yeah, that was unpl un unplanned, but it was, it was kind of hilarious too. But yeah, that's why he's never given like front billing. It's not being like, it's not about me being like a, I don't know, a kid an attention junkie. Oh, Dave left, I think. Okay. How long did it take you to put these videos together? Not that long. I mean, the, the longest thing is, is literally waiting the 30 seconds or so that I'm actually shooting and doing that 50, 50 different times. Um, the, 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 the process of doing this is not that bad. The edits are not too difficult or anything like that. So, um, who was that guy? Uh, Zeke the dog was also asking about uh, other low light things. Uh, the orange pavona here, and pavona in general, can grow, also grow in low light. Uh, what the heck is a merulina? Is it related to favia? Well, I mean, they're going to be different genuses, genera. Um, it's I mean, we, we've actually sold it before as like a hydnophora by accident because it kind of looks more like that, but it doesn't actually have hydnophores. And Marilina also kind of has like a plating form too. It's kind of, it's really kind of its own thing. It's weird. That would make a great video, Than, for people doing YouTube videos that don't have much like me. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you what. The, the gap between um, really, really, really great expensive gear 
and cell phones is getting a lot closer. Now, will a cell phone ever deliver the visuals that a cinema camera, like the, like the one that I showed you before, um, will it ever compare to that? No, it, it simply won't. Um, but there's a reason why, you know, uh, a blockbuster movie is not shot on an iPhone. There are reasons for this. But at the same time, that should not stop you from shooting your aquarium. I mean, there's, there's a lot that you can still work with. Now, I, I'm kind of, I do have to be a little bit of a hater in one regard, though. I'm not a big fan of the amber filters because I think that it's, it's, it, it's an overcompensation. Like you're, you're kind of taking um, an awful blue image that doesn't look good on a phone and you're kind of making it a, a slightly less awful orange image. So I'm not a huge fan of that, but again, I don't know if there's a lot better of a solution when you're talking about a cell phone sensor. That's simply not that great at, you know, at, at distinguishing color, I guess. I read, this is like National Geographic photo quality, so many details, oh my gosh, I'm streaming it on 4K on TV. Funny you mentioned National Geographic. They wanted to license my footage and then uh, they, they uh, wanted it for free and I'm like, no. Because <laughs> here's the thing, okay? The BBC paid, the Discovery Channel paid. Um, actually, the BBC paid like a number of different times for different shows. And, and finally, when like National Geographic came calling, they're like, no, we want it all for free. I'm like, no, hit the road. So it could have been National Geographic quality. <laughs> yeah, there's like other people that license my footage. Um, like there's like a museum that like, an, like an, a maritime museum did. Um, yeah, it's... But for some reason, like National Ge Geographic was the only one that didn't want to pay. Uh, Tony S. The key to keeping SPS is stable water parameters. That is extremely true. Uh, okay, so on Facebook, David Joseph Garcia is asking, what would be the best white balance settings uh, during coral for photography. So there's a couple things that you might want to play with there as far as that goes. You could set it on to, to fully automatic and just to see what the camera spits out. Different cameras are going to do a better job than others. Okay. So if you have like a garbage camera, you're probably going to get a, a garbage auto white balance. Hey, what's up, Kristen? I see ya. Um, so you can start with the auto, see what, what that gets you. But sometimes, uh, depending on your camera, you might be able to set the Kelvin, the color temperature, uh, just independently. And I would play with that. Go from the, the very, very, very low point to the very highest point and see what you end up with there. Also, you can do uh, something with like a white or a gray card and to tell the, the sensor, you know, like put, put the, the white card or gray card right next to the coral that you want to shoot and tell the, you know, tell the sensor that is gray and see what that gets you. Um, how we do it, like our, our cinema camera actually does a pretty decent job of doing the, the fully auto. Where it kind of falls apart is when we have a tank with one kind of lighting and then another uh, tank with a slightly different lighting and we just move the camera over, it still kind of remembers the previous tank and so it doesn't change as much as it's needed to look at the new light. So that, that's kind of like a little quirk about my camera. So sometimes we have to like point it at something else for a little bit, then bring it back and it'll reset. But um, you will probably get the most manual control using just that, that uh, like a, a, a manual Kelvin change. Okay, moving on. Got a Tango Pachyceris. There's, I think I don't think there was an, ever any other Pachyceris on here. This is one of the the weirder um, off the wall um, SPS that are that are out there. 
not too many people keep them. They're kind of like a Montipora, but like weirdly smooth. The polyps are very, very, very far apart. And these things glow like a bright yellow. They're kind of cool in that sense. Ernie Wallace had no idea you were licensing your footage. Now that's capitalizing. It's not often. I mean, but we, 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 have, um, we have done it a few times. Nat Geo hit the road. <laughs> yes. Seriously. Like, come on. It's like, you're, you're a part of, like, News Corp. I mean, like, some multi-billion dollar media conglomerate and you can't pay $200 for some footage or whatever. Out of here, National Geographic. Can't wait for payday to payday now. Gonna get some nice corals in. So yeah, um, before I, I mentioned it before, but uh, the live show corals will be available all the way up to about Wednesday. So if you, um, we're only we've only been streaming for about an hour. So if you wanted to watch the whole thing again and you, and you still see some corals available that you liked, by all means, you still have the opportunity after the fact. Like you know, this evening, you know. Um, I don't know if you if you guys are watching the fight tonight, <laughs> you can just like rewatch the stream right before the before the main event or something, and see Conor McGregor get whooped. <laughs> uh, actually, I've I've no idea who's gonna win this fight. I think it's gonna be really good. I think Khabib is gonna win though. Just saying. By the way, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to number forty five real quick. I, I have to say something. Of all the Montipora, Rainbow Montes have been around for like a really long time, and like, I don't know if there's ever gonna be a Montipora that comes up that is gonna hold like this thing's place in my heart because it is the most ridiculously cool colored coral out there, and they're cheap. I mean, like, it's like, it's a $35 coral. They grow big eventually. You know, it's it's not a slow growing thing. It's not incredibly challenging as far as SPS goes. And you just can't beat that color. It's just amazing. So anyways, it's it's probably already been sold already, but whatever. It's, it's so cool. I had to say something specifically about that one. Hey, Than, are we drinking today? Nah. I mean, not until later. Like, if, if I decide to go out <laughs> for, for a change and go watch the fight, I'll, I'll, so I think the only place near me that does it is, like, BW3. So if I just go grab some hot wings and, and watch the fight, I might get a beverage. Aaron Brickley on Facebook. What is up? Thanks for joining. And Wendy Roca uh, Moreno, Michael Moreno. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Stan Anderson will be hump match unless Conor McGregor knocks him out early. I'm afraid. Uh, okay. I, I didn't know where you're like where you're going. I'm like what? What's he? What's that? Yeah, it is. Uh, if if that fight stays standing, I mean everybody says the same thing, right? It's like if the grappler grapples, he's gonna win. If the striker strikes, he's gonna win. I'm just interested to see what what goes on. LJ's Reef, yup, love my Rainbow Monte. Yeah, they're, they're, they're insanely nice. Insanely nice. They're just not like uh, that, that cutting edge hype coral. They're probably like the most undervalued, awesome coral that's out there. They're like the yellow tang of, of corals, you know? I mean, if yellow tangs were rare, can you imagine how much they would be? It'd be, it'd be insane. Bruce Hansen, an October live sale and no octopus pirate hat. What? So Bruce, um, I, we're going to be doing like an actual Halloween live show, like the full scale live show. So these these uh, smaller live shows, I'm, I'm hoping to do more frequently that are more, again, topic focused. So this one's the SPS show. Um, so, so Kristen on Facebook is asking, will we be having a Halloween live sale as a shark? The shark thing was a mistake when we did it because the shark was like a full body suit and it was really hot that day. We, I couldn't wear that thing for more than like 10 minutes. It's like, Oh, I'm going to pass out. So yeah, that, that wasn't working out. Um, but I, I do need a costume though. So if you guys have some costume ideas, 
toss it into chat. I'll be more than happy to, to look into it. Like, actually, I think it's going to be hard for me to outdo uh, the thing I did last last year. Like, that, that Aquaman outfit was dope. I was so pleased with how that came out. I looked way closer to Aquaman than I ever thought. <laughs> um, yeah, that one worked out really, really nicely. I do have a funny story, though, because... So one of the reasons why like, I don't swear on the live show and stuff like that is because it's sometimes, um, you know, people make it like a family affair with their kids and stuff like that. So, you know, they, they, the kids watch. And when I was in Japan, one of my, um, my fans was, his name is Vlad. And he was talking to me about that particular live show. And he, he was like, your, your costume scared my kid <laughs> like the kid was like cowering the corner or something <laughs> so i felt bad but yeah yeah lawson yeah, oh yeah suzanne okay suzanne number one cooked in that shark suit yeah it was hot that day which is crazy it's like late october why is it hot but i don't know it was hot today it was freezing yesterday um aquaman's gonna be hard to top yes which kind of stinks because i saw the aquaman trailer for their latest movie uh that looked pretty good like DC movies are kind of sorry now, but that looked really, really, really good. Nick Johnson, Dapper Than is back. Will we see title footage from Reefa Palooza Long Peach? Uh, nope. <laughs> the, the closest you're gonna get is to see me on Rico's streams in chat. That, that's about as close as it's gonna get. Uh, let's see, I have a reef sleeve tattoo. I have an acro. What specifically should I color it? If I was to pick any, t uh, any, actually, I in chat, if you were going to get a coral tattooed on you, what coral would you get? I'm going to say if you were going to pick out an acro to have on you, I would have a purple bonsai. Yeah. Is it classic Aquaman or New Age? Um... So you, you so the thing is still up there. You can check out last year's live thing. It was, it was the new one. So this this is kind of funny. The uh, it was the new like Jason Momoa version, uh, but I was wearing the original like OG um, like kind of the, the the yellow golden top, and he didn't wear that in um, the 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 Justice League movie. He wore some green thing. But in this latest trailer, he at, at one point looks like he's wearing like the golden thing. So, yeah. <laughs> Bruce Hansen, tune in later for Thana's Mermaid and Splash. You're dating yourself, Bruce. You're dating yourself. Nobody saw Splash. Nobody was born then. Their parents weren't born back then. <laughs> uh, Rainbow Monty Tat. There you go. Yagi One. Yes, my son is watching right now. So shout out to, to Yagi One's son there. And yes, that's why I don't swear. I swear like a sailor, guys. Like in real life, I swear a lot. So this is like exercising some degree of control. Uh, I would get a classic green with purple tip frog spawn tattoo. There you go. Walt Disney tat, WD, and I'm guessing it's Walt Disney. Okay. Last one, guys, this flew by. We were on for a little over an hour here so far. Very quick, very quick. So this was interesting. Like, I, I have to say that a lot of this was experimental. I, I kind of wanted to see um, see how it would go. I wanted to see about the dual broadcast thing too, because that, that's a big technological hurdle. Like Facebook does not want you dual broadcasting. Like they, they put in roadblocks in place to prevent you from doing Facebook and YouTube simultaneously. So we had to come up with a workaround for that. I needed to make sure that I had enough bandwidth to send streams to both platforms. And then I wanted to see what your guys' take was where the corals behind me aren't exactly live. So, I mean, they're like, I mean, this stuff was shot like a day or two ago. So it's not like, oh no, the, you know, you're just, you're just using footage from a year ago. I'm not going to get that coral. You are going to get that coral. It's not a big deal. Um, but yeah, I, I was curious to see what you guys thought, because clearly if you give me time to actually edit, 
they're going to look this good. I mean, it's going to look really, really good. And it's, it's easier for me to just to kind of control the flow of the show. So anyway, uh oh, somebody's texting me. Or maybe. <laughs> See, I have to have like different, like a number of different phones here. Somebody did something and I don't know. Anyway, Mel DM, sup peeps, coming at the very end. <laughs> so Tony S likes the new idea. Uh, uh, Garrett Keller on, on Facebook says that he'd get the Rainbow Acan Garden or a bunch of names Zoas for the tattoo. There you go. So real quick, you know what I'll do? Since this is number 50, this is the last core that we're going to show. I'm going to quickly cycle through the whole thing. All, an all softy coral sail would be cool or all LPS. Yeah. So we're going to be doing all that. Like... We're going to be doing an all LPS show. We're going to be doing an all polyps. So that'd be like zoanthids plus soft corals because I can't even come up with 50 soft corals. Like, you know, it, it's, it's crazy uh, on my website. Um, I'm always like, we should have more soft corals. I look and we have like six or something. But then when we really, you know, like sit back and think about it, there's not a lot of soft corals in the hobby compared to, um, compared to like the stonies. And like nowhere close to the number of LPS for sure. I take take all the time you want, sir. It's quality over quantity. Well, thanks, Irif. All right, Zeke the dog. Take care. Thanks for joining. So that that's probably what we'll do, uh, assuming that I don't have like you know plans on on a weekend or something. We'll do like like an LPS show, soft coral slash zoanthid show. SPS show, then big show with like the, the 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 full repertoire. But I only wanted to do 50 this time. I didn't want to sell out like hardcore on doing all this work and it not, and not, just running into so many technical difficulties to not even make it to 100. But it looks like this is a pretty smooth process. Um, yeah, Mel DM, you came in late. You came on the last coral. <laughs> work on that costume, yeah. And what's in that cup? Just water this time, guys, just water. Okay, but let's let, let's cycle through, okay? We'll do the, the, the recap. So I'll start with the rules. For those that are unfamiliar, at least you get kind of exposed to it more and more. So if you wanted to purchase anything, you have to go to titledgardens.com slash live. Um, the, the, there is gonna be like a more detailed set of instructions as to how to go about doing this there, but the cliff note version of it is, you have to complete the checkout to actually get an item. So just having it in your shopping cart doesn't do anything. Shipping is $39.99, free over $250, USA only. Corals are gonna be um, available all the way up to about Wednesday. Okay, so uh, actually Yagi one, before you go to the beginning to catch up, I will cycle through. Okay, so real quick, number one, pomegranate acropora. Number two is a purple haze monty encrusting. Number three, forest fire montipora digitata. These things are awesome, like really awesome right now. Um, number four, and obviously that's a branching, raspberry shortcake acro. This is a pretty small guy. So the, the plug that they're on, they're all one inch plugs. So this guy looks like he's about a half inch rag. Number five, Grafted plating Montipora. Number six is the green plating Monty. This is this is a slightly different one just because of like the white polyps. Number seven is the Idaho grape. It's a purple plating. Number eight. Sunburst plating Montipora. So the thing about a sunburst plate is that it has like the the orange base, but like the bright yellow polyps. Meldium, damn, I can't buy any corals this time for coming in late. No, you can definitely purchase corals. Then that does not categorically exclude you at all. Ricardo Moore, welcome. David Hammontree. Hello, good sir. Looking good. Thanks, David. Glad you could make it. All right, moving on. Number nine, orange and green Montipora. 
Ah, Mark McKennell, you never mentioned just one shipping charge per order thing. Yes. So if you are making like a, a multiple purchases just to make sure you get the corals, um, just make sure you pay shipping once or zero times over 250. Um, and if you do happen to pay for multiple instances of shipping, don't worry, I will refund it all. All but one. I actually had somebody buy four instances of shipping. That was like, you know, like, what is that, $160 of the shipping practically? Yeah. Number 12 is a deep blue acro. 13 is the firework samacora. Somebody was asking before, like, what's a samacora? It really is its own thing. I mean, all these things, um, they're not just named just for fun. Like, there, there are some, some differences that really separate it from other, other genera, other genus. Moving on, 14. Uh, Ernie Wallace, question. How bad is it for the blade on a band bandsaw cutting through a ceramic plug? Um, I'm sure it's not great. Here's the thing about, okay, and the, the, here, I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna do a video talking about lenses for the phone, that's one thing. The other the video that I wanna do for you guys is to talk about saws, okay? Not like a movie saw. Uh, because I think people don't quite understand when it comes to how ridiculously awesome a diamond bladed bandsaw is for propagation. Because we were like, the, the very first time I saw it, I'm like, I don't know if I really need that because you know, like bone cutter shears are pretty good, you know? I don't know if I really need to have like that clean of a cut or whatever. And that saw is like 300 bucks or but maybe $200. I was like, I don't know. And the guy that was, that was showing it to me, he was saying, um, listen, this saw is going to make its money back within the first 30 minutes of you using it. And he was absolutely right. So like that, that saw literally became, like you, you make up your money instantly just by using it. So what was really cool was like, just your, your thought of like, oh, like the, the saw blades, you know, saw blades have to replace and they get expensive and whatnot. Um, yeah, no, it's not a thing. If you need a new blade, get a new blade because they, they, they make up their money so fast. It is, it, is, it is the freest thing you could possibly use. But anyway, what I'll, you know what, what I think I'll do, okay? I'll get like um, one of the, the, the less expensive saws, maybe like an Inland or something. Maybe not a Griffin, but an Inland. Maybe we'll go over the differences and I will give away the Inland to, um, to some Patreon supporters. So, okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm on the record right now. Okay, I'll, I'll do a video on both like a little like a clip-on lenses thing for the phones, give that away to the Patreon folks, and I'll do uh, a saw giveaway once I get done with that video. So you guys can experience how wonderful it is to propagate using a saw. Saltwater fish two two three eight six. Great looking corals. It's been a long time sub. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Johan M. Oops, late. I guess uh, a little bit late. <laughs> we're actually we've actually gone through all fifty, and we're just doing like the quick recap. Anybody getting mic pops? Is it my mouse that you're hearing? The little clickety clacketing. Oh, oh, that is weird. You know, I just I just saw it on the audio meter. That's really weird. It didn't do it on that one, did it? Huh. So no, that's not the mic pops. <clears throat> yeah, that's really weird. Like, did, 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 did I, you just like lose my audio entirely for a second there? Huh, you, cause it's like, when these things, uh, when, when I switch over, I've noticed that um, there's like this, like this weird audio thing that happens. 
Interesting. So I have to like pay attention to that because like the last time I noticed that it like cut out my audio altogether. Interesting. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to rewatch this and just to see what that's like. It does it every other one. It, it did it that time, right? When going from 38 to 39, I saw like a, a big spike. But not from 39 to 40. If I saw one from 40 to 41. Nothing from 41 to 42, I didn't see. I didn't see anything from 42 to 43. Nothing from 43 to 44. So I haven't seen one happen lately. Interesting. It doesn't like odd numbers. So from about like 42 and on, I haven't seen it. But it's definitely every other slide, huh? Something is not grounded right. See, I, I think it's software. So, okay. That is really weird. I'll have to look into it that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look into that. Um, Quite loud and short between us. It stopped again. Interesting. What band? Uh, what brand? Uh, bandsaw do you use? I use a Griffin. Okay, so forty nine. Okay, it probably happened from forty eight to forty nine. I saw like a huge spike there, and then to fifty. So that is like so bizarre that it happens on every other one at all like that. And I mean, I guess I could check like the connections again, but. It's not like, it's not, um, it'd be really weird if it was a hardware thing. Cause I've had this particular software program do like really weird um, little, like just weird sound artifacts when I switch. So yeah, I mean, I've had it even where like my voice audio cuts out when I do the audio switch. Yeah, so when you see it, we're hearing it. It seems like every other one for a while. And I'm wondering if it's like how quickly I, I cycle through it. Um, yeah, I think it fixed itself gremlins. You, <laughs> Yeah, that is really weird, isn't it? But anyways, uh, yeah. So we went through all 50, hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah, and this is kind of like a new experimental format and maybe this is something that I'll try to do more of once um, you know, we, we, get, we get into like a flow of, of, of doing these. It sounds like you guys like the new format um, and clicking aside, which is a little weird, um, I'm, you know, and I'm not opposed to trying a different software program even though this one literally is like $2,000. <laughs> Uh, there, there's another there's another program that I was like looking at trying out anyway, but yeah, that's that's a weird little quirk audio wise. You've got a flatworm virus. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. Well, you know what? It's uh, almost dinner time. Big fights tonight, so I know what I'm going to be doing at midnight. Um, hope you all have a good time. Uh, enjoy the rest of the weekend, and I'll see y'all later. Thanks again. Get some comments in here.